So projectile motion is, a, I think, a really interesting topic because you're taking ideas that feel very natural to us as human beings about throwing things, and you're actually being able to use maths to kind of replicate these scenarios that we've got here. Um, I know some of you do physics, um, but the way we do it in maths actually goes quite a bit more further than what you'll do in physics, so it's always worth making sure you're listening nice and clearly about how I might explain things here. Now, when you throw a ball um, in, in a projectile motion, we're actually talking about like if you had a tennis ball and you just threw it at a particular angle um, with a particular speed. Now, you may or may not know this, but do you have any ideas of what kind of pathway you think that that ball traces when you, when you throw it? Yeah, it's a parabola. It's, a, it's a, a negative quadratic. It's a parabola that it actually does. Now, in real life, it doesn't always do a perfect parabola. Are there any reasons you think that it might not do that in real life? So Air resistance and, and drag. So normally in, in real life, we norm in maths we think it will do this. In real life it tends, to, I haven't drawn a very good version of that, it tends to kind of get like a bit flatter at the other end because it's sort of slowly getting blown in one other direction by, by air resistance and stuff like that. But for maths, we can just think of it as a parabola. What modeling assumption means we can think of it as a parabola? What modeling so assumption? No air resistance, but what's the, the modeling? Particle, yeah. We're modeling these things as particles, which means we can ignore the air resistance that we've got here, OK? Um, and this is really a summary, this kind of page. I put this at the beginning because it just gets us to kind of think about some of these different bits. But we'll, we'll probably come back to, to some of these ideas later on. Um, the only thing I'll point out, because I think this is the only place I've got this written, if they ever ask you about the range of when something is thrown, it's literally just saying how far is it along the ground from where you threw the tennis ball to where the tennis ball landed. And the thing I want to have a look at here is an animation that's going to help us for anybody who is not as, who doesn't remember what it's like to throw a tennis ball, who hasn't thrown a ball for a long time. Now, when we look at vertical motion, we think, oh, it's probably going to be really complicated to do this kind of thing. It's probably going to be quite a, a tricky sort of thing to model. And what we're going to do in this scenario is very similar to what we did with forces, where with forces, we would split them into vertical and horizontal components. We do the same thing with vertical motion. We, not vertical motion, with uh, projectile motion. We split the motion into two dimensions, two perpendicular dimensions. One of them is the horizontal motion, and the other one is the vertical motion. And the best thing about horizontal motion and vertical motion is they don't interact with each other. Just like with forces, they didn't interact with each other. So we can deal with them as two separate things that we measure. Now, the first thing I want you to do when I press play and this red little tennis ball is going to fly on a para parabol parabolic path, the first thing I want you to do is just to concentrate on how it is moving horizontally. Now, when I'm talking about how things are moving horizontally, I'm not bothered to see how high up or down it's going. All I want to see is how fast it moves across the page. So I'm going to play this a few times, and I just want you to think, how fast is it moving across the page? So I'll reset that. And then after the third time, I just want you to talk to the people next to you. How fast, how would you describe the way that it's moving across the page? So tell the people next to you, how do you think it is moving across the page? I'm not bothered about up and down, just across. Okay. Right, I'll play it one more time. So what kind of things did people say? How was it moving across the page? Ismail. Um, it's going down and then at the point of the page. You're talking about how it's moving overall. I was asking for you to concentrate on how it is just moving in like an across way. I'm not interested about how it's moving like 
up and I'm not talking about its speed, I'm talking about how is it moving across words. Muhi, what do you think? Um, it's moving across the same way, it's just being changed. So all, I'm, all I want now is for horizontal. Horizontal, you said it's moving across the same way. What do you mean the same way? Yeah, you can talk, I, I was not talking about the overall, you can talk about the horizontal speed, I just don't want to talk about the overall oh, speed. the horizontal velocity is constant. The horizontal velocity is constant, okay? And one of the ways you can see that in, um, in the diagram is this blue arrow that's running along the bottom here is the horizontal speed. And you'll notice the horizontal speed as I press play is staying at the same size, the arrow is staying the same size, you see? And I guess the way you should think about horizontal speed is if I was going to walk right in front of it so you couldn't see the ball at, the, at all as I walked across, I would need to walk across at a constant speed. I wouldn't need to start running and then slowing down or anything. I would just be walking across the board at the same speed to cover that ball up as I wanted to walk across, which means horizontally there is no acceleration. Well, I guess that makes sense that there's no acceleration because gravity doesn't act left and right. Gravity just acts up and downwards, right? The only time in real life that there should be acceleration as we go across would be what? Deceleration. Good, deceleration. When? Down. Drag. It would be when there's air resistance. There's a resistive force. If there was a wind or just general air resistance, this arrow here, acrosswards, would be getting slightly shorter because the air resistance would be making it decelerate and get shorter. But we never have to deal with that because this is A-level. This isn't university engineering or anything, okay? So that's the first thing that we look at here. Horizontally, it just behaves with no acceleration. No acceleration should send you back to year eight maths where you've just got speed, distance, time. Nothing changes. Speed, distance, time. We don't even need SUVAT for horizontal. We just use our speed, distance, time triangles. Now, vertically, we've kind of given the answer away because we've spoken about gravity, and we know that gravity accelerates things downwards. So when I press fire, have a look at what happens to the size of the vertical blue arrow. It's big. It's getting smaller until it gets to zero, and then it becomes more negative. That is because gravity is making it become smaller or more negative. It's going from a large arrow to begin with, which becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until it's zero, and then it becomes more and more negative. So um, there was one of the bits so that Ismail mentioned earlier on about when it got to the peak. When we get to this peak point here, what could we say about the, the vertical speed that we have? What can you say about the vertical speed at the peak? Zero. It's zero. OK, it's the same thing about when you've talked about things being thrown upwards and down, when the ball is being thrown right up in the air, when it's at its peak, the vertical speed is zero. We're now just combining these two things together to think about how they might move. The best thing about these curves is they are parabolas, and parabolas are symmetrical. So lots of things that we can do with these. We can save time by just knowing that there's like reflective symmetry in loads of these things to, to try and make things come out in a little bit more of a simplistic kind of way. So we are going to, this is the whole topic really, this is the whole thing that we need to know about, this is the, the, the concept that comes behind this. Once we understand this concept, everything else is just applying ideas and maths that we already understand. There's nothing in here that should be about things we, that I have to teach you other than this box that we've got here. So we consider the vertical and horizontal motion separately. For the vertical motion in the vertical direction, the acceleration downwards is g. Because it is constant, because it's just on Earth, you can use the SUVAT formulae because the acceleration is constant. Constant acceleration, you can use those formulae. The horizontal direction, the acceleration is zero, which means that there is constant velocity. So you can go all the way back to year eight maths and you can just use speed equals distance over time. Now we're going to do a few examples where I am just going to project the ball horizontally or the particle. But I always like, I think it's easier to think of these things as actually like throwing a tennis ball. So in these beginning examples that I've got on your first page and then I think your second and third page, they are all going to be thrown in a horizontal direction straight out. I'm not going to do it, but imagine instead of it being a ball, maybe it was someone doing archery and they were firing the arrow directly horizontal. They weren't doing it like you see in the movies, like 
trying to send it back really far to get the other armies and stuff. They're just sending it straight out across. So let's just read through it. So as a particle is projected horizontally at 25 meters per second from a point 78.4 meters above a horizontal surface. Maybe it's like on a cliff or someone up on a platform. Find the time taken by the particle to reach the surface. Then find the horizontal distance traveled in that time. Then find the distance of the impact point from the original point. This one I think is best just to take one part at a time. I think it's not, not much point in looking at the whole question here. The impact point is, bam, where it hits the floor, okay? Like the bit where there's the collision with the floor. So the time taken by the particle to reach the surface. Well, looking at the question, because I said you're going to consider vertical and horizontal motion separately, do you think that we know more about the vertical motion or do you think we know more about the horizontal motion? I, th I think we know more about the vertical motion here because the horizontal motion, I don't know what this x value is at all. So I'm going to have a look at the vertical motion and I want you to write down, this isn't me just doing this for you, I want you to write down what you're considering. We're considering the vertical motion and I think it probably makes sense if we consider downwards as the positive direction. Now I don't like it when people do this. So please don't do this. Because if you write all five of them down, and then you're like, OK, I know this one, I know this one, I know this one, and I want this one, your brain is trying to find the formula when you've got five things written there. If you've only got the four things you need, your brain will easily be able to see what that formula is. It will just go s equals ut plus a half at squared. So you have to trust me with these things. And just try not to go S U V A T because you don't need five. You need three, and then the one you want. So please get out of the habit of writing Suvat down. I don't like it. Okay, what do we know about the vertical motion? Tell me some values out of Suvat. I know. U is zero. That's probably the hardest one to see. But because you're throwing something horizontally. Vertically, you're not giving it any speed. You're not throwing it downwards at all. You're not throwing it upwards at all. So vertically, it has no speed. Yeah, Muhi, another one. Uh, A is 9.8. And it's going downwards, and we've said that downwards is positive. Ronak, another one. I think S, S is 78.4. Remember, it's like a snapshot at the beginning, snapshot at the end. How much has it moved vertically? 78.4 downwards. And we want to find out the time taken. So I'm going to put time, and I'm going to do that really weird, non massy thing of putting a question mark. But it reminds us that's what the question wants to do. Now we can see dead easy. It's not v squared equals u squared. It's just s equals ut plus a half at squared. So you get 78.4. That's just 0. And then half of a is 4.9. So you get t squared. I've just sort of subbed in quick there. And what does that solve us for, for t? Four is four or minus four, but clearly we want the positive value um, because it's time. Yeah, it's time. So for part A of the question, we've got that it takes four seconds to travel from here to here. Yeah. It will be, it could be either actually in this situation, but it's going to be, the, it's asking for the distance. I'll explain maybe some of the differences when we get there. So for part B of the question, clearly we have considered the vertical motion. In mechanics, you always end up having to do the same things every time. They just have little twists. The way you do projectiles is you do vertical motion, horizontal motion, possibly the other way around, and then you solve some equations. That's it. So we're going to write down what we're doing we're going to have a look at horizontal motion. I don't mind if you write horizontal motion or horiz and put a dot, you, you know, just something to indicate what we're actually doing here. Now, horizontally, we know that the speed is 25. We know that the distance it's traveling is x. And how long does it take for this journey? Four seconds. Four seconds. We worked that out earlier on, didn't we? The most important value in all of these questions out of S, U, V, A, and T, in my opinion, is T. Because T is the one value that will bridge between horizontal motion and vertical motion. If you think about that, 
t up in the vertical motion is the only one that will appear down here in this one. They share the same times for the things that we're doing. That's the thing that will take you between them. Just like when we did slopes, acceleration was the most important because you had f equals ma and you had the a that came up in SUVAC. That was the, the bridge value that took you between them. Now, I always get my speed distance time always confused, but we should know that distance equals speed times time. So the distance is 100 meters, OK? Now, part C of the question says, find the distance of the impact point from the original point. So I want to know that distance. I don't want to know the distance of the pathway, because the distance of the pathway is like further maths, further, further pure two, like to, to actually find out the length, to find out the length of that line. We just want to know snapshot at the beginning, snapshot at the end, what's the distance between them. So it's just Pythagoras. So same thing, because it doesn't say find the distance traveled. It says find the distance of the point from the original point. It didn't say find the distance that it traveled, OK? So the distance is 78.4 squared plus 100 squared, which is? Did you do that already, Muhi? No. Nope. How much? 127. Is that rounded? No. 127 meters. OK. I'm going to do one a little bit quicker, and then you're going to do one, and then we'll do a short bit of practice, and then we'll move on to the the way we properly throw things. We rarely, in real life, throw things straight ahead of us. If you threw things straight ahead of you, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. If anyone wants to throw any paper in the bin, you have to calculate your angles and speeds before you want to get them in this time, OK? So we'll go nice and quick. Shh, shh, shh. Particle is projected horizontally with speed u from a point 122.5 meters above the plane. It hits the plane at a point which is at horizontal distance of 90 meters away from the starting point. Find the initial speed of the particle. Well, again, do we think vertical or horizontal is the best way to start here? Horizontal. I think vertical is better because I don't know the horizontal speed. I also don't know the horizontal time. All I know is the horizontal distance. I don't want two things I don't know. So I'm going to, again, do my vertical motion, and I'm going to consider downwards as my positive direction. I don't mind if you do up or down. Vertically, it has no speed to begin with, vertically. The distance it travels is 122.5. The acceleration is downwards, always downwards, 9.8. And again, I'm interested in finding out the time. Do you notice how this one doesn't have find the time, find this, find that? It just wants us to find this initial speed. You can't do that unless you find out this t time. T is the most important thing. It's the thing that bridges between the two topics, the two, uh, the two ways you can consider this. So please make sure you're always looking for T. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So 122.5 equals 4.9 T squared. So T equals 5 when you solve that, I hope. It is, isn't it? Now you can see why time is the important one, because that's the one I can put into the horizontal motion. You're always, I would say 95% of the time, time is the, question, is the value you need. Would you say that's it's usually s equals ut plus a half at squared is the most common one that you will be using in all of this. Obviously, it's not going to be that all the time, but I would say this equation 70, 80% of the time. But the time value is the bridge value. 95% of the time, time is what you're looking for. Now, there's no part B for this, but I can then go straight into the horizontal motion. And OK, so distance is 90, time is 5, and the speed is u. Speed equals distance over time. So u is 18 meters per second. And you've got a question to try on the bottom half of that page. I want you to have a go at that. And then I'm just going to give you a couple of questions to have a go at before we move on to the, the proper stuff, OK?